Hi everyone, I'm Susana Rivera-Mills and I have the pleasure of serving as Provost and Executive Vice President at Ball State University. And I'm here today with Jim Williams, who serves as President of the MCS School Board, and Leanne Kwakowski, who is the CEO of MCS. Thank you both for being here today. Mm -hmm. And also thank you for sharing with our community and the MCS stakeholders your context, your vision for MCS, and the details of the Academic Innovation Plan. Mm -hmm. As you know, we worked together for the last year and we put together this wonderful draft. And we've also heard some questions from the community. So I thought this would be a great opportunity for us to address okay. some of the questions that we have been hearing. So Jim, maybe I'll start with you. Um, I know that you, we have created this comprehensive plan and I'm wondering, some people might have provided specific ideas that they won't see in the plan. How would you respond to them? The, the plan itself is a product of many, many, many different voices uh, throughout the community. Uh, we are constricted by the length of the plan by virtue of what we can submit to the state. Um, and within that plan, it is a high level outline. We have our two foundational principles and our five pillars. Uh, the ideas that will make up this specific delivery of education and innovation will be set forth in greater detail in the MCS strategic plan. So if you don't see uh, a specific reference to something in the plan itself, uh, chances are there's something uh, related to it, uh, derivative of that idea in uh, the strategic plan. If not, as I've said before, this is a living document. Uh, we have accumulated all of these ideas and some of it is resource driven at this point. Uh, we have included uh, what we uh, as a community uh, think is a priority. A uh, sp specific example of that is literacy uh, and the emphasis on, emphasis on literacy and numeracy for our younger grades. But that doesn't mean as we get to years four, five, six, and seven, other ideas that are in the hopper uh, won't find their way into a revised version of the plan. Great. Good. That's good to hear. And Leanne, I know you've been working on the MCS strategic plan. Mm -hmm. Do you see some of those ideas being fleshed out? Absolutely. I, I would say, you know, we were very grateful for all the wonderful ideas that were brought to us. And we know that, you know, we have limited resources and time and many of our plans involve professional learning and then implementation. And so within our strategic plan, we were intentional with timelines and what that will look throughout the, the five-year plan. Great. Um, so related to all that, as you begin the implementation mm -hmm. of this plan, and as a lot of these initiatives roll out, how will you know what's working? What mm -hmm. kind of measurements or assessments mm -hmm. will you be looking at? So we're going to use multiple measures to determine our success. So one of those measures, we're going to use a performance-based teacher rubric that's grounded in best practice. So teacher observations will be one way to inform us of how things are working. We also are going to conduct surveys with our families, our students, our teachers, our administrators on a yearly basis, and receiving feedback from them will help us. We'll use, of course, the traditional formative assessments and state level assessment data. We'll use other data as well, such as referrals, suspensions. Um, we'll also use attendance. Uh, those will be ways that will help us measure success. Um, we also are working with a team from Ball State University, a team with research and evaluation, and they will collect quantitative and qualitative data. They will help us learn how to pivot and make adjustments, and they will also determine our, an, a good evaluation for how things are working. Great. With all those different measures, we aim to create a data dashboard that we will be able to display to make it very transparent so we could keep our community updated on, on our progress. Great, that is good to hear. As far as timelines, what sense do you have? How long will it take for results to be seen? I think you've already seen some results over the course of the past 18 to 24 months as things have stabilized as a result of the partnership. Clearly there's um, 
uh, renewed confidence with faculty and staff and, and many of our parents. But in terms of uh, the, the delivery of the plan, uh, the projection is that years one to three will be continued stabilization and bringing us to a baseline level where we're delivering best practices. Uh, best practices being uh, what other similarly situated school uh, systems who are successful uh, with their learners uh, are implementing in their programming. So that's our uh, one to three year goal. Our four to seven year goal is to build on that and broaden the implementation. An example would be, um, say, uh, internships for every student in the community by the time they graduate. Internships paid or unpaid to uh, develop uh, a better pathway from cradle to career as we say. So that's an example of something that would be four to seven years. Another example is again uh, th wide universal three-year-old pre-k. Again those are resource driven um, developments that will be uh, critical to overall success but those are, are probably not going to happen in years one to three. We're one to three, we're going to be focusing on getting all our four-year-olds in. One to three, we're going to be building partnerships with employers in the community. At the same time, we are reaching a baseline on delivery of, ser uh, delivery of educational services, literacy, numeracy, uh, sciences, physical education, uh, health, uh, and so on. Right, right. This is a, an ambitious plan, mm -hmm. and Leanne, you mentioned limited resources. Mm -hmm. How is MCS going to pay for all of this? Mm -hmm. Well, first, I would say we have a very generous community who support MCS in terrific ways. We have the Ball Brother Foundation, George and Francis Ball, Schaefer Foundation, Community Foundation, our banks, the Star Press, Jim and my Kitzelman. Yeah, Kitzelman. Those are some of um, the community members who have supported us through grants to help us with our strategies that will be part of our innovation plan. We also have um, applied for competitive grants. This last year, two that I can name, we received a, an $800,000 school improvement grant and we received a $460,000 career ladder grant which will support the work of our master and mentor teachers for that continuous job embedded professional development in our schools. We also have great partners such as with Project Lead the Way. They have given us um, grant opportunities to continue some professional learning through Project Lead the Way. Their CEO is a former Ball State proud grad and he wants to see Muncie Community Schools be extremely successful. We also are leveraging our federal grants in a way to make sure that um, we are using those dollars tied to pieces of our innovation plan. So we're being strategic with that. Earlier in the previous um, presentation, Jim mentioned our education fund and how we're able to be able to pay for teacher raises. With our education fund, we're trying to preserve that to be able to um, direct it to teacher salaries, support staff administrative salaries and benefits. So we're using our other funding sources to direct those funds to our innovation plan. Great. And, and Jim, how do you see the state supporting all of these ideas? Uh, the state is extraordinarily interested in what we're doing here in Muncie. Uh, this partnership is historic. Uh, there's not another one like it in the nation. Uh, Ball State's reputation for training teachers, for uh, providing uh, best practices, uh, for teachers not only in Indiana but across the country is well known. So when the state uh, created this by virtue uh, under pressure of, of circumstances locally, uh, they I, I think saw it as an opportunity. And so we're blessed to, to have this um, opportunity to provide uh, in effect a laboratory for what can be an innovative uh, first-rate uh, system uh, that provides uh, the best education possible uh, to our learners in the 21st century. And candidly, um, you know, there, there's a lot of 
um, changes underway, distance learning being one right now that we're all wrestling with as a result of the virus. And so we are being forced to learn some difficult and complex lessons. Um, our learning here in Muncie and Delaware County as a result of this partnership, not just distance learning but across the board, is going to be used and studied across the nation. It already has been. Absolutely. And, and you mentioned Ball State, and of mm -hmm. course we're aware of the historic nature of our partnership. Mm -hmm. I have been so pleased to have the opportunity to work mm -hmm. with both of you very closely over the last 18 months mm -hmm. or so. How do you see Ball State fitting into the picture as you move your plans mm -hmm. forward? Well, I see Ball State being an integral part of this plan. So first you've mentioned we have weekly meetings between Muncie Community School leadership with Ball State leadership in your office every week. And those are extremely helpful meetings to us. We have the Academic Innovation Council. They will continue to receive updates on, on the progress with, with our plan. We have Ball State faculty and students in all of our buildings. You will see many of our strategies incorporate the, the faculty and the staff to help us achieve our goals. We also have our professional development school liaisons, PDS liaisons. They too are assigned e a faculty at each school and they are going to help mentor, support, um, give, g be there for our principals to help them achieve uh, um, support with our, with our plan. Absolutely, and I know that our faculty are very excited to continue mm -hmm. to support your work and have projects that engage our students as well as your mm -hmm. students and your teachers, so we're very much looking forward to that. As we read through the plan, uh, and I know that we've spent a lot of time talking about innovation and what innovation means for us, and we mm -hmm. even discussed this at the Innovation Summit last mm -hmm. fall where we celebrated with all of our MCS teachers. What distinguishes this plan as innovative as opposed to your traditional improvement plan mm -hmm. for a district? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say, and we can both... Go ahead. Sure. I, I, I would say, first of all, we had so many voices create this plan. A traditional school improvement plan, you do not have the, the parents, the, the students, teachers, administrators, Ball State faculty, um, President Mearns, mm -hmm. provost from the university. Mm -hmm. You typically wouldn't have state leaders and national experts to provide feedback and ideas for a plan. Typically, school improvement plans are compliance driven and they sit on a shelf, but this plan is not going to be one of those that is going to be placed on a shelf. Everything we do over the next five years will be driven by this plan. So that, again, makes it more innovative than what some might be. We also looked at what innovation means to us. You know, we can have the big idea that um, many have not tried yet. We can have innovation where um, others have used best practice and then we're going to apply it. As Jim mentioned, you're going to see that in our plan these first three years. And we will also innovate our operational practices. And that means we're going to make sure our policies, our procedures, our guidelines, we're going to change them to be able to, to be more responsive to innovation and to improvement. Excellent. Jim. Three, three things I would note. Uh, Public Law 221, which was the original school improvement plan statute that was done, I guess, what, 20 years ago now. Mm -hmm. I served when I was a trial judge on one of those committees for the district where I was serving. And I can tell you my observation at that time, sitting through a few of those meetings, was this was largely window dressing. Uh, that this was not going to be uh, something that impacted the delivery of education in any way, shape, or form. Uh, this plan uh, is, by order of magnitude, exponentially more innovative, detailed, and uh, contains a much greater range of input uh, from experts on a nationwide basis. And, and that leads me to my second point. The inno one of the innovative parts of this plan, and one of the pillars, is professional development. Education is a profession, and uh, contrary to maybe um, some conventional wisdom out there, uh, it is very difficult to successfully educate 
uh, children. Uh, we started this experiment in this country in 1840 and we're still perfecting it and reinstilling the notion in this community through this partnership and Ball State's reputation that we are working with professionals who are leading in their field and who are receiving best practices and understanding um, how to deliver substance, how to connect with students from all sorts of different socioeconomic backgrounds. Those things are innovative. This is not a one-size-fits-all. It is a uh, plan that is driven by an understanding that each student comes to us with unique gifts, unique skills, and we have to be prepared as a system to meet that student where they are and to lead them forward. And that's hard work. Mm -hmm. And I think recognition of that work and recognition of the complexity of that work in and of itself is, um, is innovative. Too often communities have uh, relegated the notion of public education to a silo over here and that's what they do over there. We send our kids over there and they come out at the end of that silo after 12 years and we take what we get. And candidly that doesn't work. It hasn't worked for some time and we are recognizing that and this is a community plan. It is driven by community engagement, community feedback and partnerships and collaboration across the board. So I think mm -hmm. Uh, while that may not sound innovative, that doesn't happen. No, you're absolutely right. And I think that the fact that you have valued the community values mm -hmm. and you've been so attentive to that and intentional, I think the level of engagement has been extraordinary. The fact that we were able to hold nearly 30 different community dialogues and sessions and listening sessions, of course, with the help of United Way mm -hmm. over the course of last year, uh, just created an incredible amount of input, I think, for this plan. So as you move forward, how do you hope to continue to communicate with the community, with families, and other stakeholders? It's got to be a continuous conversation. And it's, it's a dialogue that's going to have to go back and forth. Um, I would say that in this crisis we're in right now with the pandemic, I have heard from a number of different quarters that uh, parents particularly have been very, very pleased with the level of communication mm -hmm. they're receiving from the school. Uh, we are going to continue to have to, um, on a very, very regular basis, hold community forums. We're going to have to be communicating on a, a weekly basis with our uh, families, uh, a much uh, more frequent basis with the broader community and they with us. Um, looking uh, backwards to inform our path forwards, um, schools weren't always receptive to community guidance and vice versa. Communities weren't always very receptive to the school's requests. And this is a partnership. I run a law firm in town and if the public school system does not succeed, my business ultimately does not succeed. Uh, my practice of law um, is dominated by social problems that are a direct result of failures of imagination, failures of communication between schools and the community. And that practice is unpleasant. It's not, it's, it, it doesn't compensate particularly right. well. Uh, we do much better when we have people starting businesses, when we going into professions. Um, so uh, as we move this forward, that conversation uh, it has to be two ways. It has to be open, and the schools, I think, are, have, have got to be receptive. I've said before, and I will say it again here today, uh, K-12, the, the folks there, Dr. Kwiatkowski, in spite of her many, many talents, and everybody else below her, in spite of their many talents, cannot be successful in this effort alone. Mm -hmm. uh, this requires uh, an all-hands-on-deck uh, community-wide effort to ensure that uh, we are ultimately successful. K-12 standing alone is not enough and it hasn't been for some time. We've just come to that recognition mm -hmm. uh, perhaps a little later than, than some other folks but we're there. Great, great. And Leanne, I know that one of the things that you have been very intentional about is communicating with your principals, communicating with your teachers regularly. I assume that's something that will continue. Yes, we know communication is extremely valuable. So we, we 
with our families, we will do continue with all the traditional approaches. And we know that we have to even do more than that. And so part of the reason for us wanting to put up a data dashboard would be another way to make sure that our schools, as well as the community, can understand where we are. And then I would also like to, on a yearly basis, be able to do a state of the district address to be have the, the community be able to come and hear our, about our progress. With our teachers and our principals, you know, I, I believe that um, it's important that we're visible, that we're in schools. I believe it's important to get feedback from teachers. We um, conduct something that is called a process check, where every year we go into the schools, my leadership team, and we'll meet with every grade level teacher, asking them questions and getting impact input on what's working and what isn't working. And that helps us to be able to adjust and to adapt or to give them additional resources or training that they might need. And we're committed to doing that every single year. Great, that is wonderful to hear. So as we wrap up our interview here, I wanna give each one of you an opportunity to mm -hmm. just give us, what's your takeaway message? If there's one message that you would like everyone to leave with who is listening to us, what is that one message that you would like them to have? Well, one message is hard because there's so much I want to say, but I would say I go back to what our vision, placing learners first. Um, we, we are providing a quality education opportunity and environment where we're ensuring that all students are known, cared for, safe, challenged, empowered, inspired. I would say in Muncie Community Schools, this is a time where there are many opportunities for students, for teachers, for families, for our community. Excellent. How about you, Jim? And I would, I think, echo what I said just a moment ago, and that is uh, be a participant with us. Mm -hmm. um, read to kids, be a mentor. Um, w work with your neighbor. Um, education is the great leveler, and uh, it is the difference between a life which is one of mere struggle and one which is just almost unbearable. Absolutely, and I can relate to that personally. I would not be here were it not for the educational opportunities that I received in my life as well. So thank you both so much mm -hmm. for the wonderful work that you're doing. Thanks everybody for joining us today and I hope that you will take some time for, uh, to find that link on the website and provide your feedback on the Academic Innovation Plan.